Hello and welcome back and that's right today I want to talk about a new QNAP but before we go any further it is worth touching this video is actually two different subjects in one. The first half of this video is me talking about the brand new QNAP TS466C a very familiar NAS that also has some slight tweaks to its architecture that are worth discussing and the second half of this video is going to be about regional releases. Ergo why is it some NAS solutions don't get released globally because let's get it out of the way straight away the TS466C is not getting released outside of China the reason we're talking about it here on the channel is you know YouTube is global and although it is blocked in some places in the world it is worth highlighting that a lot of people watch videos like this to find out about new hardware so regardless of the fact that TS466C isn't going to be released here in Blighty in the larger part of Europe in the US in lots of lots of places in the world I do think it's worth talking about but there's no denying that it could be a real pain in the bum when you find out about some new kit that's completely restricted to one small part of the world and can't be distributed elsewhere but more on that later for now let's talk about the QNAP TS466C now this isn't it this is the TS453E but it is using this chassis and moreover not only is it using this chassis but it's also utilizing pretty much everything about it which is a couple of tweaks now this uh, the TS453E arrived about halfway through 2022 it arrived with an Intel um, uh, a J6412 a newer generation Celeron processor there at 8 gig of memory fixed couple of 2.5 GPE ports there on the rear, a couple of M2s inside it, Gen 3 times 2 and you couldn't expand it with 10 GPE but it was actually a good middle ground now, serving as an alternative for your budget and the way you want to upgrade than that the TS464. Now the TS466C somehow merges them the tiniest bit arriving with an Intel Pentium processor inside there and that is the Pentium Silver the N6005 a CPU we have talked about on the channel a few times before more on that later alongside um, either 8 or 16 gig of DDR4 memory so even those two specifications for me kind of make me look down on this device immediately there's no avoiding it the uh, the pentium silver that's inside there not a seller on it's a grade up from that um this cpu ranks you know pretty darn well on cpu benchmark it's also kind of the embedded cpu of choice for a lot of mid-range desktops whether you're looking at topton that cwwk now that we were talking about even if you were looking uh currently at that ongoing saga that is the storax a kickstarter all of those arrive with a version of that N6005 CPU. Higher in um, a lot of its capabilities, not just clock speed, um, than the likes of a Celeron. It arrives with a 2.0 gigahertz base level that can be clocked up to 3.3 gigahertz when needed over four cores and four threads. It also has integrated graphics on board um, ranging at five, um, 450 megahertz there that when needed can go up to 900 megahertz on the graphical component there. Again, giving it a higher potential clock speed and a higher graphical capability than any other the Celerons out there, including uh, the J6412 inside that CPU there. Now, again, it's going to have a slightly higher power consumption there, the TDP, but at the same time, not that much. We're still talking about an integrated, um, sorry, uh, an embedded uh, server chip there. And again, rather than arriving with 8 gig fixed, it's going to arrive with either 8 or 16 gig. So upscalability over two sodium slots to really rank up that memory there. And if you're looking at Plex Media Server, it's definitely going to outpace these two by a country mile there. Now, it's got four SATA bays there, again, supporting up to the latest 22 and, you know, very shortly 24 TB drives. Uh, and then on top of that, there are two M2 slots inside. Those two M2 slots are Gen 3 times 2. So again, rather than Gen 3 times 4, which is a real Shame. it does mean you're going to be able to at least get up to a potential 2000 megs uh, per second out of each of the m2s that you put inside there now alongside that on the rear of the device has got two 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports there it's got two usb 3.2 gen 2 10 gig slots there again lots of capability and support across qts there it's also got an hdmi 4 uh, 2.0 port there so 4k 60 frames per second alongside a usb 2 port there so again you've got your kvm set up there for your local access with hd station and you've got a decent level of power there for the general use of the device now when it comes to expandability it supports pretty much 
all of the expansions barring those that do the PCIe upgrade there. So you're talking about the two and the four uh, JBOD and uh, hardware RAID expansion boxes there, and at least two of those on this device. So again, giving you the ability to expand the four bays to a potential 12 bays of expandability down the line. And again, JBOD or hardware RAID, it's really up to you. It is a damn interesting NAS. And as much as I would like to have it here in the studio, the realistic answer is it's never going to be here in the studio. Why? Because it's China only. That's the C on the end of the title there. Now, if you head over to QNAP's website, you just change the .com to .cn or uh, to, to, you know Taiwan prefixes or even others, you do find, much like other brands, there are some releases in NAS uh, brand portfolios that are restricted to regions. And you can, it should be argued, you can import them, but you'll never be able to buy them via your own distribution you'll never be able to go to your local retailer and get that directly you will need to go to um, a chinese retailer or a chinese affiliated retailer there now why is that why is there this whole business of regional releases there's a few reasons some are more appropriate than others but if we were to take a casual look real quick at QNAP, out there there is actually quite a lot of releases on, in their portfolio that are restricted to just China only region. Some of them are upgrades and alternatives to existing units. Um, so again, we've got four on there. I think probably the most intriguing for me is they for a number of years have had a three hard drive, two SATA system in the TS5 series. And with the TS564, it's powered by um, a Celeron processor there with a three hard drive base and two SATAs there. It's the same size as a two bay, but it's a five bay storage SATA system there. And later revisions have even started including M2 as well. So that's a triple tier desktop system. So again, this brings us back to the point, why are some releases China only? Well. There's a few reasons. Number one, refreshes of existing uh, systems, as you see here on the table, happen intermittently. So normally um, a range such as the TS453E or uh, the TS464 have a run of around two to three years. And every two to three years, that uh, range is refreshed with a new one, with a newer generation of several of the components that are available at that time. Now, that can be because they want to, you know, scale up what the systems are capable of gradually over time. It can also be that the manufacturers themselves, such as Intel, have their own refresh cycles where they run a certain CPU on their production for a given period of time, and then they phase in a new one, exacerbating and forcing uh, vendors that utilize those components to hop onto the new versions. And those new versions often cost a bit more money. They also upgrade things like uh, supported hardware services, I hate seagulls, and uh, the more uh, increases PCI lanes that the CPU can support. And therefore, not only the number of things the device can had attached to it in terms of ports and connectivity, but also uh, a greater per a performing bandwidth afforded to them. So as these refreshes happen every two to three years, in some cases longer, depending on the series, this new range will arrive. And sometimes in different regions of the world, there is more stock of an existing item. So for example, you may have the case that in the West or you know the US, just to pick one region out of the, uh, the air, there may be lots and lots and lots of this for that market, but the Chinese market may not have any left. So therefore, a, a refresh run there will happen first. Now this happens gradually over time, but as it happens more and more, you end up with the synchronization of each portfolio becoming completely unsynchronized. And therefore, you have kind of mid runs between refreshes where in, say, the UK, we may have a device refreshed every two and a half to three years. So a new intermittent range is introduced in another region, which kind of borrows a lot of the new hardware and it can often be utilized as a, a, a kind of litmus test and an indication of what the next generation of hardware components we from that brand and in that series are going to be. So one of the largest reasons for China only releases is often the case that these refreshes have happened in those uh, regions sooner. Now, another thing that isn't really spoken about a lot online is just general availability of components. And there are just some components that are easier to find and get in other, one region than another. And that includes distribution. Now that can come down to rather than 
a brand being able to get, say, 5,000 or 10,000 units of a specific component, they can only get 2,000 at this time. So therefore, it will be a shorter run of a series. Now, they might ascertain that though there is a demand for that product, it might not be as high as some more fully featured releases, again, the TS-464. Consequently, that may be designated a smaller region release when there is a refresh due within those individual areas. Overall, the big result is that you can end up with a portfolio from a brand like QNAP where you think you're looking at their full range of solutions when suddenly just swapping to one other region, you suddenly find out there's a whole host of middle uh, uh, options which may allow you to scale what you're going for. For example, if you were considering the TS-453E, it is a good NAS, there's no denying it, but the appearance of the TS-466C, that is a better device than this. The problem is you're never gonna get it. In the, in the West. It may get a rebrand or a rename. It may eventually become the refresh of this device a year, two years down the line. But ultimately, when it comes to regional releases, I, I don't really like, I've never liked the fact that some regions get hardware and others don't. And although you as the consumer can choose to buy from an international outlet, that does affect your warranty. That does affect your support. You're going to need to communicate with a vendor or a reseller much, much further away than you'd like. And that could include RMA sending devices back and forth and also certain language differences as well within the OS. So there's lots of reasons why a China-only release can happen. But there's also lots of reasons why it's not actually a desirable option. Ultimately, the 466C, I'd love to see that more widely available. And I think we will in one shape or form after this. And we probably will see that Intel Silver CPU become the de facto CPU upgrade moving forward, given the way Intel has reshaped its Pentium and Celeron portfolio with a lot of naming convictions thrown out the window recently, but also just the general cost of each individual component likely producing the fact that that Intel Silver becomes the next generation CPU refresh for a lot of these ranges. But most of these are barely a year old at this stage and therefore something bigger and better may come along. But this has been the TS-466C NAS. Let me know what you guys think. Perhaps you went ahead and bought NAS is like the TS-551 or something internationally and you're utilizing one of these middle refresh devices from another region. Did you find the experience good or bad? Did you hit RMA issues? Or did it cost you more or less because of the tax let us know but apart from that thank you so much for watching there should be an article link below on this device and more than that thank you so much for watching hope you have a great week and i'll see you next time